this evening? At approximately 5 p.m. this evening, we had a uh, traffic crash that occurred um, at Jefferson and Liberty Street. Uh, the vehicle that struck a uh, northbound vehicle had been um, previously attempted to be stopped by some police officers due to the fact that he was wanted at once. That vehicle had fled the traffic stop about four or five blocks away. The vehicle continued away from there at a high rate of speed, uh, and officers had discontinued their pursuit but could observe a, va a traffic crash about four blocks ahead. When they arrived on scene, they found this tragic scene where the offending vehicle ignored a stop sign at a high rate of speed, according to witnesses, and struck another northbound vehicle with one occupant. That northbound vehicle's occupant, the driver, a male, approximately 40 years old, is now deceased. The vehicle that fled the scene, uh, the individual was one on a warrants, um, he is now in custody. He had serious injuries. He is uh, being treated, but also in police custody. And he had a female passenger who was going to be in custody on some unrelated charges, and she is currently in critical condition. Well, talk about a botched getaway. This drunk driver didn't just stop running from police cars. She rammed right into them. Yeah, that was back in February in Lake Oswego. Fox 12's Kimberly Eaton is live with a look at the chase video that we're seeing for the first time tonight. Well, and police first actually saw the woman who was driving the Jeep in that video before she even got into the SUV. She was walking out of a bar and an, a an officer asked her not to drive. But after that, all their dash cam video shows, she didn't take his advice. It's a surefire way to start a police chase. Refuse an officer's suggestion to get a ride home after drinking, then ram a patrol car and speed away. We'll make a three. We are North State. That's what the driver of this Jeep Cherokee, Mary Lanning, admitted to doing after she led police through Lake Oswego early one February morning. As she weaves down State Street, dash cam video records police asking if they can do a pit maneuver to stop her. You can see a cop car make the move. We're 30 miles an hour. She's all over the road. With a car in front and a car behind, Lanning looks to be blocked in. Then there go the reverse lights. Put your hands up. He's behind the car. After a few more attempts to get away and a lot more damage to the police cars, Lanning is under arrest. It's the first time she's been in legal trouble. Lanning pled guilty to driving drunk and eluding police. She had her license pulled and was ordered to stay away from alcohol. Kimberly Eaton, the 10 o'clock news. That wasn't the only pursuit tonight. Just moments earlier tonight, there was a pursuit in St. Louis. My colleague Matt Sesney takes that story. Jasmine, this police chase started in St. Louis, went into the Metro East, and ended downtown. And Sky Zoom 4 captured most of it, giving us more questions than police tonight are willing to answer. A small blue car, according to St. Louis police, was at first being tailed by one of their undercover units because of felony warrants on the driver. But the driver was in no mood to stop, leading police across the Mississippi River, mostly along Route 3. Illinois State Police joined the chase along with at least one local department. Spike strips did rip apart two tires on the car, which continued to move on its rims over the Poplar Street Bridge and back to St. Louis. As the car dodged traffic, the driver took the I-44-55 exit and ran into a stopped tractor trailer that pinned the car against the guardrail. Police then swarmed in with guns drawn. A uniformed officer, believed to be from Cahokia, pulled out the driver and repeatedly hit the suspect. Remarkably, police say there were no injuries. They also say one suspect was taken into custody. Yet we saw a second man taken out of that car and also put into custody. And tonight, St. Louis police say that investigation is still open. By tomorrow, we expect charges to be filed against the driver and maybe have a more clear picture over what he was wanted for, along with answers to other questions. We're live downtown. Matt Sesney, News 4. Well, a chase through a South Florida neighborhood ending with a capture. The pursuit in Hollywood coming to a crashing end. Police blocking the SUV at the corner of Taft Street and Park Road. But the driver wasn't exactly ready to surrender. After they pulled him out the car, you know, he was still fighting and they had to they tasered him. 
Well, cops took the man into custody. They say he sold heroin to undercover officers. A police chase through Albemarle County and Charlottesville ended with the arrest of a Charlottesville man this afternoon. 32 year old Kevin Key is facing two felony charges along with driving on a suspended license and possession of marijuana. Police say the incident started when an officer tried to stop a black Ford Expedition SUV for a traffic violation along Route 29 near Greenbrier Drive. Key then sped away and eventually jumped out of his SUV at 5th and Harris Street, but he left it in gear and it rolled into traffic, hitting another vehicle. Key ran off into the woods near Cleveland Avenue, but police caught up with him. Wilburn police say a couple from Danvers burglarized a home and then led officers on a high speed chase. As WBZ's Bree Season reports this evening, the mom is accused of driving the getaway car with her five young children in the back seat. Randomly trying to break into this home on Mayflower Drive was a bad idea, says Woburn police. Neighbors noticed a man out of place right away, and officers say they caught him in the act, but the burglar ran. He hopped into a waiting car that was driven by a female. That car was this minivan, and it made its way into Lexington at speeds reaching 75 miles per hour before police safely brought it to a stop on Hancock Street. When we opened up the door, we found in the back uh, of, of the van uh, five children, all under the age of seven. When you see kids involved in something like that, it just breaks your heart. And what were they thinking? Kathleen Johnson watched the arrest from her front door. They were really upset. The little girls were screaming, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Daddy is identified as 39-year-old Ralph Pascarello of Danvers. His wife, 26-year-old Selena Pascarello, is accused of being the getaway driver. After the pair's arrest on Hancock Street, police took custody of their kids and called the Department of Children and Families. Yet Mom Selena paid a $500 bail on her 11 charges, including five counts of child endangerment with risk of serious bodily injury, and she was able to leave the police station with the kids. How does she leave your police station with the same van and those kids? She made bail. That's how she left the station. Uh, the van was no longer... Uh, of interest in the investigation. And as far as the children go, that's gonna be a DCF issue. You're gonna to have to follow up with them. DCF tells me they've had prior involvement with this family and Saturday evening sent a statement saying it's in the process of removing the children on an emergency basis and will file a care and protection petition with the court next week. For East Season, WBC News. That'll ruin your day. Valley police chasing a man they had accused of violating a protective order. The chase finally ended with the man, as you see right there, hit the cruiser head on. Now, the video you just saw was shot by 16-year-old Jared Hinkle, whose father happens to be a sheriff's deputy. Jared was riding with another deputy as part of the Boy Scouts Explorer program. As the vehicle was headed towards me, I was pretty terrified because I didn't know what was about to happen. But my adrenaline was pretty high. You got out and you called your dad. Oh, yes, that's correct. Called him and told him what was going on, and they had a bunch of officers over there taking him into custody, and everything worked out just fine. 
We're happy to report neither Jared nor the deputy were hurt. The cell phone video will be used as evidence in the suspect's criminal trial. Gosh, they ought to get a merit badge for yeah. that or something. Philadelphia police have just released surveillance video of a vandal striking in the northeast. They are hoping this leads to an arrest. You can see the suspect walking down the 4200 block of Frost Street where he slashed several tires. The video also shows the suspect slashing a tire in the 7900 block of Decatur Street. First look at police car video that shows what led up to the crash that killed three Detroit teenagers. 7 Action News reporter Tara Edwards with the story. There you go. Dash cam video from a police cruiser captures the moments leading up to the tragic crash. The white Jeep Grand Cherokee with three teens inside speeds off. Officers turn on their lights and go after the vehicle in southwest Detroit April 20th around 1 a.m. According to police, inside the SUV was 17-year-old Charles Miller, 14-year-old Cynthia Elizarez, and Suhelia Alvarez. Officers say it all started on Campbell when Miller, the driver, was trying to escape police because the Jeep was stolen. Still speeding on Campbell, the SUV eventually plunges down an embankment onto I-75 where the SUV crashed. We need someone to block off the freeway. Come on that car. As quickly as possible, they may have uh, struck another vehicle. Sadly, all three teens were killed in the crash. A vigil was held for the teens who were loved by many in the neighborhood in April, and a makeshift memorial was placed where the accident started. I spoke to police, and they tell me they are not calling this incident a chase. They say that the police car was way behind the SUV. In the meantime, a makeshift memorial still sits out here near 75 in Campbell, and even today, people were visiting it. On Detroit's southwest side, Tara Edwards, 7 Action News. Up the top at 11, a wild chase across three counties ends in Boca Raton with the driver of a white Benz in cuffs. The chase started after police tried to pull over the driver in a stolen car on the MacArthur Causeway. But that driver then led police up I-95 towards Boca Raton with Miami Beach, Miami Dade, BSO, and Florida Highway Patrol officers following close behind. Local 10 News reporter Jason Martinez is at the scene in Boca Raton with the latest. Good evening from North Boca Raton. Behind me here is I-95, and that is the scene of a police pursuit that ended just a little while ago tonight. This pursuit spanned over 60 miles and three counties of South Florida roads. This white Mercedes sedan is finally stopped after a joyride that police won't soon forget. You could call it a marathon police pursuit. According to Miami Beach Police, the chase began this evening when two men allegedly carjacked somebody and wound up near the jam-packed MacArthur Causeway. When police spotted the white luxury car, they tried to pull over the driver who headed west on the causeway, then north on I-95, through Miami, then north through Broward County and into Palm Beach County, just north of Congress Avenue. That's 60 miles. Witnesses say at times the Mercedes was being pursued by as many as 20 patrol cars from various agencies. The two men in the car finally gave up their run in North Boca Raton. Our cameras captured one of the men wincing in pain. I-95 was shut down for a short time, but it's since reopened. In a region that's seen its share of tragic conclusions to pursuits, this one has a peaceful ending. As you can see, FHP still on the scene, and so is that white Mercedes we presume will be returned to its rightful owner at some point. That Mercedes unscathed in this whole incident. When you see that many cops around and they all got their guns drawn. A scary scene on I-5. 
police scrambled to chase down a car full of armed suspects. A mall theft led to a chase on the freeway and then a chase through the bushes in Tequila tonight. Police are still searching right now for one of the five men that was involved in the chase and ultimately a crash on I-5. Como Force John Humbert is live along Interurban Avenue. How did they catch the rest of those guys, John? Well, guys, as you can hear, this is an incredibly busy area, but police actually cornered one of the men on the other side of this fence, but then they cut through in order to keep chase and go after the others. Just part of a wild night here in Tequila. On gorgeous nights, you don't often find grisly accidents and bold escape plans that fail in spectacular fashion. These guys are so lucky they didn't get killed. Joe DiPrieto saw cops combing the brush near Interurban Avenue. That's one of the guys they got right there. And he pulled out his camera. See, they got the cuffs on him. Joe is from Connecticut. This is vacation. And they were chasing somebody over there, but the helicopters actually must have spotted them. Tequila police say five men were part of a theft at the nearby South Center Mall. As they fled, apparently the car hit another vehicle and then later crashed. Despite the horrific look to the wreck, all five men bolted. Saw two guys that hopped the fence and trying, trying to run away. Officers fanned out, arresting four of the men with the help of police dogs. They had to cut through part of the fence to keep the search going. The man pinned behind this part of the fence was arrested too. So he wasn't going anywhere. Police found weapons back in the car on the highway, but they haven't found the one man who got away. A hunt that will continue. So we figured something was happening. You know? On a night not made for tourists. Pretty exciting for a little vacation that we took to come out here. <laughs> Now again, four of those five suspects are in custody, and just a few minutes ago, we learned that one of them actually had an escape warrant with the Department of Corrections. We were told that once that was discovered, he was sent immediately to jail. Reporting live in Tequila, John Humbert, Como 4 News. Here's where that police pursuit ended, with that white truck coming down through this yard and crashing into this fence. Still, we spoke to the homeowner that lives here, and she says she didn't hear a thing. The cops knocked on our door this morning at 7 o'clock and let us know that there was a truck in our backyard. Lauren Lee asked us not to show her face, but says this isn't the first police chase that's come through here. However, it is the first one to punch a gap in her fence. We have animals and so we need to get them out in the backyard and it's halfway down. So <laughs> the fence is halfway down. Police say this was the end of a larceny at Walgreens over at 51st and Sheridan involving four people. My best understanding is that they were basically filling up a shopping cart with items and fled the store with some of the items in the cart. Two men and a woman left in a white truck, leaving one male suspect behind. Police were able to get a good description of the truck and spotted it nearby. They learned it was stolen. The truck took off for about a mile long chase. A male and female suspect jumped out of the truck at different points, leaving Shane Ryder, the man police say was driving. He eventually crashed the truck here, just short of a gas meter at 61st in Pittsburgh in Lee's backyard. The arrest report suggests he was armed. It's a little scary. We weren't quite sure what was going on. Even though all four suspects were spread out around Midtown, police found and put them all behind bars. In Midtown, Caitlin Alexander, Tulsa's Channel 8. Coverage continues in Omaha, where we are learning more about a West Omaha bank robbery. KETV News Watch 7's Christina Engel is live near 156 in West Maple. Christina. And Jeremy, this is where police say it all began at the Bank of Bennington behind me here, where they say three men in their late teens, early 20s that were armed walked in and demanded cash. But tonight, thanks to a handful of vigilant citizens, those suspects are in custody. When Omaha police came, well, yelling at Michelle Perrin's back door, at first she thought she was imagining it. And I got up and went and looked in my sunroom, and there was a police officer. In a matter of moments, police rushed her out and filled her home. But what or who they were looking for wasn't inside. I still, I don't know how he fit in there. And there is in this lilac bush in Michelle Perrin's front yard. Their police dog, because they were bringing a police dog into my house, actually pulled the officer to the bush. And this very large man was being dragged. I mean, a good muscular size, very tall man came out of that little bush.
That man is one of three suspected in a robbery at the Bank of Bennington. Less than an hour later, police were hot on their trail because Lieutenant Mark Matuza says someone nearby noticed suspicious behavior. He gets in his car, ends up following the car, calls 911, puts out a plate number. He ends up losing it off 144. But officers spotted this silver Buick again near 88th and Blondo, and after a short pursuit, less than a mile, they ditched the car and ran off. Right now, we're trying to piece together. Uh, whether they're directly involved in this bank robbery or other bank robberies. So uh, we're still working through that. Matusa says they caught the first two suspects right away and the third blocks away in Perrin's lilac bush. I did hear that he had, was armed, and that's, you know, I have my girls, my family. And now that she knows it's a good hiding spot, we might as well film it now because it's being torn down because um, that was scary. Now tonight, police still have not released the names of those men or charges, or if they found if they if they found any amount of cash on them at the time of the arrest. Reporting live at 156 in Maple, Christina Engdahl, KETV Newswatch 7. All right. If someone with a gun stops you and demands your money, would you call police? Well, what if the person who demanded your money was the police? I team's Glenn Meek looked into roadside cash seizures by deputies in rural Nevada and finds their tactics are, well, generating a lot of heat. That's right. Some people in Humboldt County are sort of tongue in cheekly referring to it as highway robbery. Mm. Now, we want to say there is no evidence that police and prosecutors are keeping the money for themselves. But there is a very real issue of whether their zeal to intercept drug money is also catching innocent people in the dragnet. The I-Team has obtained exclusive dash cam video from one of these car stops, and it shines a rarely seen light on what's going on on the side of the road. How much money you got? You're watching Humboldt County Deputy Lee Dove. That's not yours, is it? Well, I'm seizing it. This dash cam video gives insight into what some say is a pattern of questionable drug interdiction stops by Deputy Dove here along I-80 near Winnemucca. He stopped an out-of-state motorist for doing 78 in a 75 zone. Dove finds $50,000 cash and $10,000 in cashier's checks during a search of the car. I'm convinced that's dope money. Now, you may get away with the, you may get away with the, with the cashier's checks and stuff, but you ain't getting the cash. That's going to be seized. The first issue is whether Dove obtained permission to search the car or whether he simply told the driver, Tan Nguyen, that he was going to do it. Well, I'm going to search that vehicle first, okay? Well, what's the reason to search my car? Because I'm talking to you. Well, I'm not going to explain that to you. I'm not going to explain not that to you. I'm not going to explain that to you, but I am going to put my drug dog on that if my dog alerts I'm seizing the money. But Dove never seizes the money under state forfeiture law. He offers Win a deal. Abandon the cash and you can leave with the traveler's checks. Otherwise, Dove will confiscate the cash anyway and tow the car because Win's name isn't on the rental agreement. It's your call. If you want to walk away, you can take the cashier's check, the car, and everything in it, and you can bolt. And you'll be on your way. But you're going to be walking away from this money and abandoning it. Our sheriff and our DA have said, oh, there's no wrongdoing here. D. Holzel is a Winnemucca blogger who wants an investigation of the I-80 cash seizures that's independent of the local DA and sheriff. What they said initially was, well, these are civil forfeiture programs. These kind of things happen everywhere. There's nothing unusual about Humboldt County, but that turned out not to be true. When you have people by the side of the road and you're having them abandon their money so they all be allowed to get in their car and drive away, they don't do that everywhere. I don't have all day to sit here debating it. You need to give me a decision what you want to do. Critics believe deputies have been avoiding court oversight by leaning on drivers to abandon their cash rather than seizing it and giving warnings rather than tickets. If they're given a ticket, then they got to show up in court and say, hey, wait a minute, I wasn't speeding. And besides that, this guy took my dough. Deputy Dove, my name's Glenn Meek. I'm with Channel 8. I caught okay. up with Deputy Dove at a canine right. training event in Winnemucca, but Dove declined a TV interview. The sheriff's office released a photo of Dove with Wynn's money following the traffic stop, saying the money would be used to help fight crime. But the money was eventually returned to Wynn, along with $10,000 in attorney's fees, after Wynn sued the department. An armed person stops a traveler 
and demands the traveler's money and tells the traveler that unless he gets in his car and moves on down the road and forgets all about it, he's going to take his car, too. There's your license. I'm not going to call the tow company. I'd say that might be uh, pretty close to what you're describing as highway robbery. And you're free to go, my friend. All right. This afternoon, I had a candid conversation with Sheriff Ed Kilgore of Humboldt County. To his credit, he conceded that proper procedures were not followed in a number of cases. He says officers no longer ask people to abandon their cash. If it's suspected proceeds from crime, the civil forfeiture process will be followed and people will be given their day in court. He does put some of the blame on the DA's office up there, though, for not making sure that his cases that his office sent them were properly reviewed and processed. Huh. I left messages with the DA's office but didn't get a response. Here's what Kilgore said to me today. We want to do the right thing. I am a strong proponent of fighting the war on drugs and want to make sure everything we do here is on the up and up. And coming up at 11 p.m., we'll hear more on the changes being made as a result of all the controversies surrounding these cash seizures. And we'll also hear from a young man who had $2,400 confiscated from him simply as he traveled across Nevada on hmm. the way to California for a new job. Somebody's got to be checking on him like you did. Thanks, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Here we begin tonight with breaking news. Live pictures from Sky Fox. This is a Target store, actually the parking lot of one, near the U.S. 16 Power Road in Mesa, where officers have just arrested a suspect who led them on a chase for nearly an hour tonight. The suspects ditched their truck and then they ran into a Target hoping to get away, but they didn't get very far. The Target full of shoppers, and here's the scene here just before officers arrived. Both people trying to ditch police hoping to hide out inside that Target store. Officers, though, were able to catch them and lead them out in handcuffs. Police began this chase south of the valley. This was along I-10 near Casa Grande. Just before 8 o'clock tonight, the suspects continued westbound on I-10, heading toward Phoenix, traveling at a high rate of speed. And they were driving, you know, all over these freeways in this part of the valley. At one point, they got off on Baseline, took some side streets, got back on the freeway, and then back on the U.S. 60. Now, that chase ended as uh, it really headed east as the suspects weaved in and out of traffic. At one point, officers decided to end their pursuit because it was getting too dangerous. Now, here's where it gets really hairy, though. Uh, it was then the suspects decided to make a run for it by pulling into the Target store. They ran past a bank, US 60 and Power Road, ditched their truck, and ran inside that store. So let's go back out live to the live pictures tonight from Sky Fox. Uh, so again, here we have the parking lot out in front of the Target. And, John, we were watching this as they ran in. There were shoppers running out of there, employees running out of there, yeah, police running in. it's very disconcerting to watch that. So we have a crew on the way to the scene. We'll bring you the very latest as we get it. So, again, this chase ending in front of a Target store in the East Valley. And everybody okay? By
search is on for a pair of teenagers who attacked a woman in her 70s. The duo caught on camera stealing her purse and punching her in the face. CBS 2's John Slattery has a story from the Lindenwood section of Queens. Surveillance video from 15 yards away shows the victim on a sidewalk with a cart of groceries when two young people, a man and a woman, approach her from behind. The woman steals the pocketbook from the cart and the man punches the woman in the face. This neighbor who saw it happen ran up to the victim. She was just, she was shaken. She didn't know, she was like, I didn't expect them to come after me. She was like, I, she was like, I think they saw me walking and then they waited for her to come back. They just victimized her. The victim fell backwards, sustaining a cut to her ear and abrasions to her arm. She was treated at Jamaica Hospital. It happened Tuesday afternoon around 3.20 at 153rd Avenue and 88th Street. The victim was 73 years old. This neighbor says it happened just as a detective was driving by. And as he's turning the block down here, he sees them punch the old lady and she goes down so he tries to chase them down and then that's when I seen that happen and then he told me just to call 911. But they got away. Yeah. The purse contained $100 and a cell phone. Because the video was shot at a distance, details are not good, but police describe the pair as 18 years old. The woman wearing a vest, the man in dark clothing and cargo pants. The unusual incident has older neighbors like this 79-year-old on edge. Do you see me? I got no pocketbook this morning because you got to be afraid to come out now. Because descriptions of the two are sketchy, police are hoping that someone with knowledge of the attack will come forward. In Lindenwood, Queens, John Slattery, CBS 2 News. Police tonight on the trail of a suspect smashing home and car windows in a tight-knit Bergen County community. Dozens of homes and cars have been hit in a seven-block radius in Teaneck, New Jersey. CBS 2's Christine Sloan shows us the damage. CBS 2 News on the scene as police respond to this house on Lincoln Place in Teaneck, New Jersey, and take away the main piece of evidence, a brick. Investigators say a suspect on a bike has been terrorizing residents in this neighborhood, using bricks to smash the windows of cars and homes. Well, I heard a loud crash in the night around 1130, and I came home this morning and found that there was a brick thrown through our a garage. Around the corner, the suspect tossed a brick through the window of this house on Claremont Avenue, hitting a teen in the head. On the couch underneath that window was an 18-year-old female who was laying down when she got struck in the face with either broken glass or a piece of the brick. She's okay. That's all the teen's family would tell us. Feldman is shaken up even though no one in her home was hurt. These people who commit these crimes don't think about the victims and how they they're affected and it's just it's awful what makes this crime different the suspect actually walked up the driveway and then smashed the window it is unnerving but especially because we have a path that goes towards the back yes, this white spot here four homes in nine cars were hit monday night within a two-hour period police believe it was random she called me and said yeah my uh car window had gotten smashed this neighbor who doesn't want to be identified got a glimpse of the suspect i saw a guy flying by at the end of that in a bicycle with a white shirt. Police say they know the identity of their suspect, a man who is over the age of 18 and who they believe is responsible for shattering the windows of more than a dozen other cars earlier this month. In Teaneck, New Jersey, Christine Sloan, CBS 2 News. Police say it was all damaged, that nothing was stolen. They're asking residents to let them know if they've been a victim of this destruction. We begin with a wild car chase last night that started with police up in a checkpoint in Mount Vernon. Then a taxi driver eventually led police on a chase for several miles, which finally stopped in Co-op City. That's where we find News 12, the Bronx reporter Jessica Cunnington with the details. Yeah, Alicia, this is where police say the taxi spun out and they were finally able to catch the driver. But as you said, it all started with that checkpoint by Mount Vernon and state police. Police say the yellow taxi just drove straight through it and hit two Mount Vernon officers. And that's when the chase began through Mount Vernon and into the Bronx. Police say the yellow taxi stopped at one point by 233rd Street and Dyer Avenue. And when a cop started walking towards the car, it started 
driving towards him. Police say then that cop shot at the car but didn't hit anything. This is viewer video at Co-op City Boulevard and Bartow Avenue where it all ended last night after 8 o'clock. Now, the NYPD had no involvement in this, so Mount Vernon police will take care of this yellow taxi driver and any charges he might face after this. From Co-op City, I'm Jessica Cunnington, News 12, The Bronx.